So when you're selecting a scope, um, you might wonder how many bits you should have, does not matter, and the analog bandwidth. These are two pretty major considerations. So I'm going to show you a few examples, and I'm using Python for this, and I'm going to be using simulated uh, results, basically to show you what the, the theory predicts you should care about. So for example, here we have a sine wave, um, and the figure tells you that it's being digitized at 500 mega sample or 5,000 mega samples, so five giga samples per second, and I have a 350 megahertz analog bandwidth. Um, <clears throat> so we can look at the FFT of that. This probably looks fine, but when we digitize it into that 8-bit sample, so the first thing to notice is that this signal is perfectly hitting the input range. So this is your absolute best case you would ever get. In real life, you're not going to so perfectly hit this. Um, when you look at the FFT with 8 bits, you see, okay, there's the big spike at the, what did I say this was, 50 megahertz point. Um, but we have all this other stuff, and this other stuff is due to that 8-bit quantization. So when it's breaking it into a step, and if you go to something like 12 bits, you can see that's reduced a lot, um, and 16 bits, it's almost completely gone. So if you want to play with this, there's some Python code that I'll give you the link to in the, um, in the bottom comments here but just to show you briefly it looks something like this so what are we going to do here we're going to do the the FFT edition um, so we just turn on the FFT plot at the bottom there and you can decide okay well let's let's make this not full scale let's use 8 bits um, 100 megahertz analog bandwidth and what do we got here? 50 megahertz frequency. And we won't use a square wave, we use a sine wave. So when I run this, it takes a second and two figures popped up here. So here we see the FFT in this case. So again, you can see this, now it's even worse um, than before in theory. Oh. And there's the, the input sine wave. So it's been reduced internally to give us sort of even worse performance than before. So just kind of an interesting thing if you want to play around a little bit um, with it. So the other question is, what about scope bandwidth? So scope bandwidth is really important for in digital circuits and whatnot when you have square wave. The square wave, as you may uh, probably know anyway, in theory, the harmonics would expand, extend infinitely. So if I do this FFT once again, and let's have the input as a square wave, um, and we look in the frequency domain, <clears throat> what you'll see is that tons of spikes. Here we go. Um, so we have the first, the main harmonic, and then we have these uh, third order harmonics extending down. So we can just zoom in here a bit. Um, so there you can see that. So. 50 megahertz, 150 megahertz, 250, etc. So if your scope is rolling off those higher order harmonics, you actually won't get a square wave. So here's 100 megahertz analog bandwidth only, and our beautiful square wave isn't looking so good. So you can play around with different bandwidths and different square wave frequencies with this script. So there's 200 megahertz analog bandwidth, um, and there's 350 megahertz analog bandwidth. So they aren't perfect because of how I've done the filtering, uh, so you get some other effects that you might not see, but the basic idea is there that you can compare, you know, I'm only looking at a 50 megahertz square wave, which isn't super fast for a lot of digital electronics nowadays, but I'm needing almost 350 megahertz to get a really good idea of the uh, look of that wave.